Good morning. And welcome to worship here at University Lutheran Church. My name is John Heiliger. I'm the parish pastor here, and I'll be presiding for our liturgy this morning. Our campus pastor, Pastor Josh Hessner, will be preaching. Uh, to let you know, we did approve uh, Lutheran Services Carolinas to have a, a space, of, an office space in the education building. They're primarily going to be working from the field, but we have uh, the room in between the LCM kitchen and the adult Sunday school room. You might see some people that you don't recognize, and that's for Lutheran Services Carolinas. We'll have an article in this week's newsletter uh, about that. To let you know that Christine Balcom will be in our prayers this morning. She fell on the ice, broke her shoulder in three places. Surgery was not required. They were able to set it, but she will be um, not able to drive for a little while. So we'll have her in our prayers. And then lastly, um, we talked about this at council. We have an online instant church directory, but some of those photos, the kids are this big that are now this big. Uh, the beautiful thing about this directory is that we can update it with our own photos. So A, if you don't have the online directory, please reach out to either me, Pastor Josh, or Abby, and we'll make sure you get that. And then B, if you'd like to update your photo, please just submit a photo to Abby, and she can easily upload it to the directory. Are there other uh, announcements for the good of the congregation? Well, then let's our hearts and minds for worship as we listen to the prelude. I'd invite the congregation to please stand and turn towards the baptismal font as we begin our worship with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates us, redeems us, and calls us by name. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and your beloved children. We have turned our faces away from your glory when did it not appear as we expected. We have rejected your word when it made us confront ourselves. We have failed to show hospitality to those you called us to welcome. Accept our repentance for the things we have done and for the things we have left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us and lead us, that we may bathe in the glory of your Son born among us, and reflect your love for all creation. Amen. Rejoice in the good news. In Christ Jesus, your sins are forgiven. You are descendants of the Most High, adopted into the household of Christ, and inheritors of eternal life. Live as freed and forgiven children of God.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the scriptures to be written for the nourishment of your people. Grant that we may hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that comforted by your promises, we may embrace and forever hold fast to the hope of eternal life. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. First reading is from the book of Nehemiah, the eighth chapter. All the people of Israel gathered together into the square before the water gate. They told the scribe Ezra to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had given to Israel. Accordingly, the priest Ezra brought the law before the assembly, both men and women and all who could hear with understanding. This was on the first day of the seventh month. He read from it facing the square before the water gate from early morning until midday in the presence of the men and the women and those who could understand. And the ears of all the people were attentive to the book of the law. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of the people for he was standing above all the people. And when he opened it, all the people stood up. Then Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people answered, Amen, Amen, lifting up their hands. Then they bowed their heads and worshiped the Lord with their faces to the ground. So they read from the book, from the law of God with interpretation. They gave the sense so that all, all the people understood the reading. And Nehemiah, who was the governor, and Ezra, the priest and scribe, 
And the Levites who taught the people to who taught the people said to all the people, This day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep. For all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Then he said to them, Go your way, eat the fat, and drink sweet wine, and send portions of them to those for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to our Lord, and do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. The word of the Lord. Amen. Please join the cantor in singing the psalm responsively. The second reading is from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free. And we were all made to drink of one spirit, Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot would say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear would say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? 
If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Nor again, the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And those members of the body that we think less honorable, we clothe with greater honor. And our less respectable members are treated with greater respect whereas our more respectable members do not need this. But God has so arranged the body, giving the greater honor to the inferior member, that there may be no dissension within the body, but the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it, and God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then deeds of power, then gifts of healing, forms of assistance, forms of leadership, various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret, but strive for the greater gifts. The word of the Lord. Please stand as you're able for the reading of the gospel. This is the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the fourth chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee, and a report about him spread through all the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then they began, he began to say to them, Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Y'all may be seated, and any children that want to come up for a special message can meet me up front. I got a couple of toys to grab. Nice. How's it going? Did you guys get to play in the snow last week? Man, it was fun. What did you do in the snow? Um, we, me and my dad made a snowman. A snowman? Oh my goodness. Was it big? No, it was Olaf. Oh, it was Olaf. So it was a little smaller. Kind of weird looking. Very cool. All right, I brought a couple of toys here. I want, I've been practicing this magic trick. Have you ever seen anybody do a magic trick with cards before? Yeah. You know how to do one? Maybe we'll let you show us after the service too, because I, I don't know if this is going to work or not. But let's see here. Here, Elliot, how about you pick a card out of that little pile right there? Yeah, you pull it and then show everybody the card. I'm not looking, I promise. Did you see it? Yeah. Okay, remember what it was. Put it back in here somewhere, wherever you want. Okay, can I look now? Is it upside down? Yeah. Okay. All right, now we'll see. Let me shuffle it up. And then I'm going to find your card in here. Was it this one? No. Are you sure? Yeah. Oh, hold on. You're right. That wasn't it. But it was this one. Yes. That was it. There we go. Very nice. <laughs> that was cool. I did not think that was going to work. 
I'm better than I thought. Let's, uh, let's do it one more time, okay? This is very cool. Okay, did you show everybody? Okay, all right, now put it back in there. I'm better than I thought I was. Here. All right, I'm gonna shuffle it up. Let's see if I can do it again. Oh, it was this one on the front. Oh, are you sure? All right, let's see. I know which one. It was this star. Nope. All right, one more try. I know I can do it. Was it the same one again? Oh, okay. All right. Okay, so, so I was one out of two. That's not too bad. You can try it. It was the ace of clubs. I should have known. Um, <laughs> I, I've been practicing that and I'm not too good at it yet, uh, but I'll keep practicing, it's okay. But it's okay that if I, even if I never get good at, at magic tricks, I, I'm good at something else. I can juggle. Have you ever juggled before? Yeah. I can, oh, you have too? Oh my goodness. I'm trying to. Oh, you're trying to. But see, like, I've, I've practiced this and I can learn how to juggle like that. And not everybody's good at everything, right? Like, so maybe I'm not really good at magic tricks, obviously. But maybe I can be good at juggling or, or running really fast. What, are there some things that you guys are really good at? Are you good at reading? Or, um, yeah, she's good at reading. She's good at softball too, right? Or, or you guys are good at singing. Or What else are you good at? Anything else? Soccer and running. Oh. Can I tell you all the things I'm good at? Yeah? Oh, yeah. Let's do that after the service. That's very good. I bet you're good at so many different things. But the, the passage that Mr. John just read tells us that there are some things that we are really, really good at because we are blessed by God with all of these different gifts and skills and things that we are good at. Now, we might not be good at everything. Like, I'm not really good at this magic trick. I just got lucky. But I can juggle and I can read and I can um, run pretty fast and those kinds of things. And same with you. Maybe you're not as good at math in school sometimes, but maybe you're really good at science, or maybe you're not that good at baseball, but you're good at soccer, something like that. We all are good at some things, and together in this whole church right now, there's somebody that's good at something, and together we can do really cool things because of all the different things that we're good at, and that's awesome, right? So think about all the different things that you're good at and how you can use those things to do amazing things out in the world with all of the rest of us. Because together, with all these things that God has given us, we can do some pretty cool things. That's awesome, right? Very cool. Let's pray, and then you guys can go back to your seats and think about all the different things that Emily is good at. Let's pray. You guys can say these words after me if you want. Dear God, Dear God thank you for our gifts. Thank you for our gifts. And for our humility. And for our humility. Even if we're not good at everything. Help us to do good things every day in our lives. Amen. Amen. Thanks, guys. You guys can go back, and then I'll, uh, we'll sing a song.
There's been a conversation bouncing around our campus ministry students the last week or so about the vastness or the mystery of the universe. In the news recently, there have been updates about the construction and the journey of this thing called the James Webb Telescope. Have you seen any of those stories? This Webb Telescope is a massive piece of equipment that now sits a million miles from the Earth. And the Webb Telescope is supposed to be a hundred times more powerful than the well-known Hubble Telescope. So it's ready to explore all these different things that we've never seen before. And perhaps it will be able to offer up a few more crumbs of insight into questions like, what is out there? Or how did it all come to be? Some of our students have had fun with the debate over whether or not life forms exist outside of our own world. <laughs> a debate like that could go on and on and send you down endless rabbit holes of research online. But the mere numbers and distances that are evolved with the Webb Telescope's mission are something worth getting lost in. It reminds us just how infinitely large the universe is. When we look up at the sky and night, we can be amazed by some of the spectacles of light that we see. But we are only taking in a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of what's really out there. Now, it can be overwhelming to comprehend our own place in this vast universe. I'm getting dizzy just thinking about it. But maybe it changes the way that we think about the greatness of God's creation. It expands our perspectives of what God's creation really is. Some of our readings this morning have a similar effect, I think. The passage that John read from 1 Corinthians and Jesus reading from the scroll of Isaiah both challenge us to expand our perspectives, expand our perspectives of community. First, in this letter to the Corinthians, Paul talks about the community as a body made up of different parts. Some are the hands and the feet, Others might be the eyes or the nose or the ears. Others, the head, shoulders, knees, and toes. And although there are differences in the members of this community, they are all responsible for each other. They must care for one another, work with one another. They have to respect the presence of one another. It's humble. But clearly, this is a sort of countercultural way of thinking in a more individualistic society like our own. And then again in the gospel passage, Jesus reads an excerpt from Isaiah that mentions the common humanity shared between the crowd. Even the poor and the blind and the prisoners and those who are oppressed are a part of this message of comfort and peace. Jesus makes a conscious effort to expand his ministry, especially towards those folks who are usually forgotten or cast aside in the community. So, like the mind-blowing exploration of space and time, our lives of faith are calling us to shift our perspectives, to expand our idea of our own place in this universe, to hear the good news that we are offered this day, and to embrace the collective nature of its blessings. Jesus ends his reciting of the scroll by telling the crowd, today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. How can we let these words, this new insight, this new perspective be fulfilled in our own lives? Or like that prayer of the day that Pastor John read earlier, how can we hear them and read them and mark them and learn them and inwardly digest these promises that we have been given by God? What if we responded so in, innately to scripture as well? I love what the people in that passage from Nehemiah did after they heard the scripture read. They weren't listening in vain. They let the words wash over them and they had an immediate emotional response. They wept. They felt the words deep in their hearts and then they celebrated. They ate, they drank, they may have danced in the streets, for the joy of the Lord was their strength. 
What if we did that too? What if we let the words that we hear have real meaning in our lives? How can we work to fulfill the good news and the things that we do? What does it look like to really expand our understanding of creation and community? Pastor John mentioned earlier the beginning of this relationship that we have with Lutheran Services of the Carolinas, or LSC. This organization has been working with incoming Afghan individuals and families who are trying to start new lives here in America. It turns out that several people will be resettled here in the Clemson Seneca area, so we're offering some of our building space for LSC to set up a local office. It's been exciting to dream about what this partnership might come to be in the days ahead. And it's also been fun to hear some of the stories that folks like you have remembered about similar adventures that University Lutheran has taken on in the past. It turns out that this congregation has helped to resettle a couple of Vietnamese families in the 70s and the 80s. I'm eager to learn more about those things and I'm proud to know that we still have some of that same energy for care and support 50 years later. But why? Why are we interested in spending time and money and energy to help welcome these strangers? It must be because we have this expanded sense of community and humanity. Our community does not only consist of the people here in church today or the people within so many square miles of this congregation, In this particular case, our community extends beyond the borders of our nation, even towards people coming from Vietnam and Afghanistan. It's only when we allow Jesus' words of good news to be fulfilled in our own lives that we are able to offer up such extravagant love ourselves. When Jesus opened up the scroll and read those words, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. When he read that passage, I bet the crowd had the same butterflies in their stomachs as they have when they look up at the night sky. This humility of being just a small part of God's creation, but also the warmth of being part of something so incredible and intricately made. So today and every day, let us use our faith to push us past the limits that we have set for ourselves. And today and every day, let this scripture be fulfilled in our own lives. Amen. stand as we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles Creed I believe in God the Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth I believe in Jesus Christ God's only Son our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified died and was buried he descended to the dead on the third day he rose again He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance. So we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. You reveal yourself to us in the reading of scripture. Fulfill your word through the faithful witness of your church. Send us out to bring your liberating good news to all people. God of grace, hear our prayer. All creation proclaims your handiwork. Teach us to love the intricate and beautiful bodies that you have created. Bless tiny insects, enormous whales, and every creature in between. 
sustain species at risk of extinction. God of grace, you desire that there be no dissension among us. Where we are divided in our society, nation, or world, come quickly to reunite us into one body. Ease conflict, dispel violence, and bring an end to war. God of grace, anoint with your spirit all who seek your favor. Grant provision and justice for people living in poverty, people living with disability, those living with pain, or those living under oppression. Today we especially pray for Christine, John, Mona, Marie, Barbara, Carol, Karen, Jimmy, Martha and Nancy, Alton, Scott, Greg, Gail, Pat, Rosalind, Tony, Randy, Joyce, Cece, Margaret, Joanne, and all those we name in our hearts or on our lips. God of grace, hear our prayer. Build up the body of Christ in this place. Bless the variety of ministries in this congregation. Empower us to freely welcome and deeply value each person who enters into worship and ministry among us. God of grace, here other intercessions may be offered. Healing God, we pray for those who are hospitalized, quarantined, or who continue to struggle with disease from prior infection. We pray for those whose other health care needs have been put on hold. We pray for our health care workers, including Kathy and Donnie, Jen, Leslie, Molly, Cindy, Jennifer, Tiffany, KD, Patrick, Trey, Beth and Anna, Lee and Lawson, John, Mike, Scott, Joseph, Julie, Bill, and Stephanie, that they may provide compassionate care for their patients and receive care for themselves. God of grace, hear our prayer. As the drum beats for war grow louder between Russia, Ukraine, and NATO countries, we pray for the ongoing diplomatic efforts. Help us avoid the follies that have plunged our world into previous wars. We pray for your wisdom to create a path forward that respects nation's sovereignty and allows all people the greatest opportunities for living the lives that you have given to us. God of grace. In thanksgiving, we lift before you the saints for whom the promise of salvation has now been fulfilled. Tend to those who mourn. Bring us together in your everlasting glory. God of grace. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O God, we lift these and all of our prayers to you in confidence and faith, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always, and also with you. Let us share a sign of God's peace with one another. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy One, the beginning and the end, the giver of life. Blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and the light. Blessed are you for your promises to your people. 
Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son, Jesus, the word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in his death and resurrection. We look with hope for his coming. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us, bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people, fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. For our communion distribution, those to my left will come around the communion rail over here, and those to my right, uh, communion rail over here. Um, we do have gluten-free wafers if you desire them, and if you prefer grape juice to wine, simply raise your index finger so we'll know to serve you that. For those celebrating at home, uh, offer the bread with the words, the body of Christ given or broken for you, and the wine, the blood of Christ shed for you. These are the gifts of God, and all are invited to the Lord's table.
Please stand. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. We give you thanks, gracious God, for we have feasted on the abundance of your house. Send us to bring good news and to proclaim your favor to all. Strengthen with the richness of your grace in your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. God, who leads you in pathways of righteousness, who rejoices over you and who calls you by name, bless your going out and your coming in today and forever. <laughs> 